Why, good morning, folks. Welcome to Mar Mike's. Today, you're hanging out in the shop with me, and we are going to talk about how to adjust your valves, specifically on the mighty Briggs & Stratton motor. Yes, valve adjustments are very important because there's a little tiny gap, what we call the valve lash, between the rocker arm and the valve. And when that little gap gets out of whack, it can cause all sorts of trouble that you don't even think about because you've replaced everything else. You've done the carburetor, the fuel, the this and that and the other, and she still won't start. A lot of times, what that is, that's the valves are out of adjustment. Uh, so today we're gonna walk through that procedure. It is really not that difficult, but there are a few peculiars about it that we are going to have to cover. And you are in luck because my yard is full of Briggs and Stratton engines. So I just went walking around and I snagged a few out of the yard. And so we're going to cover some different models. Now the adjustment is very similar. You know, we've got probably 40 years of models here. It's very similar, but there are a few little tweaks about how you actually make that adjustment, which I will show you. So what we're going to start on is the most common Briggs and Stratton motor. This is the single cylinder 15 horse. It's on all the cheapo Walmart uh, <laughs> riding lawnmowers. So let's go ahead and zoom in and we will get started. So stay with me. All right, enough chit chat. Let's get to adjusting some valves. Now the first step of course is you wanna remove her top, remove that valve cover. Uh, it's gonna be held on by four 10 millimeter bolts. Should come off fairly easy. You may have a sticky situation if you have silicone holding it on. If that's the case, get a large flathead screwdriver and pry it up and try not to bend the valve cover. All right, now the first step, well, I guess this is the second step, is that we need to get the piston of the engine to what we call top dead center. That means it is at the very top of its stroke. It's as far out as possible, as close as possible to that cylinder head. Now we want that because that is when the combustion chamber is closed. As you see the valves here, when it's at top dead center on the compression stroke, that means these valves are shut, meaning the rockers are gonna be loose. And when they're shut, they're all the way up. They're not being pushed on. And that is when you adjust your valve clearance right there, your little valve lash, because you want that little space to make sure it is not pushing down that valve at the wrong time or too much. Uh, which loses compression and we have all sorts of other issues. All right, so to get it at top dead center, take your spark plug out and shove something in the hole. You guys should be familiar with that. Just put it in there and you want, well, first of all, put anything in the hole. I know some people say don't put anything sharp, but trust me, you ain't gonna hurt that piston. Just uh, make sure it's clean. So now to get it to the top dead center, you wanna rotate the top of the engine. The, you're essentially gonna turn the fan at the top, which is gonna turn the whole engine, and you're gonna feel it until it pushes all the way out, as far out as possible, out of that piston, out of the spark plug hole. All right, and you're gonna have actually two top dead centers. I can see right here, this is not the right one because we're still putting pressure on the exhaust, on one of the valves there because that's on the intake stroke. So you want to rotate if you, these are both, both not loose. You want to keep going another stroke, turn it all the way down and it's going to go down and then all the way back up. There you go. And they're both loose because on the compression stroke, top dead center, these should be both shut, which means pushed all the way up. They should not be pushed down. And that is when we adjust our valves. Now, Per the book, it says a quarter inch past top dead center. So you can actually turn it and let it come down just a touch. And that would be your quarter inch past top dead center. So, all right, I'm gonna go wrestle some dogs who are attacking my dogs right now and then grab some feeler gauges and we'll get the sucker adjusted. So we've got the engine set at top dead center, which is the position we need to adjust the valves. Now I'm gonna make one note before we actually start wrenching. When you do this, you wanna make sure this engine is cooled off. You don't wanna do it after it's been running and it's all hot because it expands the metal and it's gonna throw off all your different clearances. All right, so the first thing we want to do is look at our tools. All right, so one thing you're gonna need for sure is a feeler gauge. Now, feeler gauge has all these little metal, different thickness gauges right here, and it's gonna be used to figure out the clearance between your rocker arm and your valve. You see, that was a little fat. Um, so on these Briggs & Stratton engines, if you have one 
That's a vertical shaft, in other words, meant for a riding lawnmower. Pretty much all of them on the intake will be 0 0.003 inch to 0 0.005 inch clearance. On exhaust will be 0 0.005 to 0 0.007. So because I'm lazy, I always go with a 0 0.005 and just use that on both of them. So I've got my feeler gauge here, uh, 0 0.005 or 0 0.13 millimeters. All right, so to actually adjust the valves, what we need, on, well, first to describe it, outside you've got a rocker nut, uh, which is a 5 8 nut, and then on the inside you've got a set screw, which is a T15. Now to adjust it, you want to loosen up that set screw, because the set screw is what tightens it all down. So you're going to loosen that up, and then to adjust the clearance, you take your valve, your, your feeler cage, it's like half an inch clearance, and then you start just tightening the outer nut, I'm going to tighten, tighten, tighten until you feel it. You know, you don't want it that tight where it's just hanging on. You want it where you can move it, but there's still resistance. So when you get it in a good spot, like so, I like to go ahead and you're going to put a wrench on the outside of it and stay out of the camera angle. All right. And you want to hold it exactly where you had it. Don't move it at all, and then you're going to take your T15 and tighten the inner set screw. Then you come back, go ahead and check it, make sure you didn't make it too tight. Oh, that's perfect. You want where there's just a little resistance, but not too much. And on that inner set screw, the torque setting is 48, 45 inch pounds, which is barely, not even four foot pounds. So if you want to torque it, go ahead, just make sure to hold it. There you go. Doesn't take much torque. And then it's that easy, folks. Your valves are set. So go ahead and do that one. Do the exhaust. And next we're going to move over to the two-cylinder Intec motor and show you how it's a tad bit different than the single cylinder. Stay with me. We've scooted down the table to look at how we do a valve adjustment on a two-cylinder Briggs & Stratton motor. Specifically, this is a 20-horse Intec engine, very, very common motor. And the theory about how we're going to do this is about the same as a single cylinder, but the process is quite a bit different. Uh, so again, the first thing you want to do, you want to make sure it's a cool engine, and then we've got to set top dead center. But remember, this sucker has two cylinders. So you want to set top dead center on the cylinder you're working at, then adjust the valves, then set top dead center on the other one, because they're not going to be the same position of the engine. All right, and a pro trick for this is take both spark plugs out, because that'll make it much, much easier to rotate the engine. That way you're not fighting compression on the other side of the engine. All right, so let's go ahead and take a quick look at the rocker arm setup. Voila, let's see if we can do a close up here. Now, these are quite a bit different. Whoa, 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 whoa. You'll see the lock nut. This time the lock nut is the locker and the adjuster is the star one. So you're going to loosen up the lock nut and see, and as you adjust it down, it goes the other way. So a little different setup. And also you'll notice they are on the push rod side. So it's going to have the same effect, uh, just a different pivot point. So as we tighten this adjuster, screw down it's going to push this side out push that side down and it's going to make it tighter so again we've got the same clearances on this one point zero zero five is what i am going for so the first step on this one is you're going to loosen up the nut now this is a 13 millimeter nut you might be able to get by with a 9 16 but so loosen that guy up you can go ahead and hand loosen it whatever you want to do and then you're going to adjust the valve clearance with the star drive, which is a T40 here. So you can put your valve clearances right there. So you loosen it up way too much, tighten it. Yeah, we're about there. You know, where it's tight, but not too tight. So you're gonna hold that in place. Voila. Try to keep it super still. This is where I always screw up because you can't let it move as you tighten this up. And then you're gonna tighten up the locking nut on the outside. Make sure you get your ratchet set correctly. Come on. All right, and again, it's not gonna be a whole lot of torque, but a decent amount of torque. And then you wanna go through, 
double check your clearances. Yeah, so that one got a little tight. I'm probably going to loosen that guy up just a touch. So as you can see, it's very similar, but it is quite a bit different. And I, I looked at the old Briggs & Stratton engine, and it had the same setup as this. So I think if you're within the last 30 years, this these two adjustment styles will take care of you. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and sum it up. We're going to strap this engine back on my lawnmower. But if you want to stick around, I'm going to do a bonus scene on a push rod issue you may happen to see when you open the sucker up. So stay with me or catch you next time. All right, before I leave you, I have got to do a public service announcement on push rods because I know some of y'all are probably freaking out because you pulled off your cover and your push rod is just like hanging out. It's not even in the cup and it's not, it's just like what in the world is going on? And you pull it out and I guarantee you that one of your push rods if it's just hanging out, it's probably bent. So this is a great time to check if your push rods are bent because it is a extremely common failure point, specifically on these Briggs uh, two cylinder engines. Now, if you look at the two push rods, I got these guys pulled out. You'll notice one's kind of dull, one's kind of shiny. That is because one is made of aluminum, the other one is made of steel. And I have noticed this aluminum guy, because aluminum is much softer, will bend anytime this engine gets overheated. If you get too much grass stuck up in here, the engine just gets too hot, melts the push rod, bends, and it just stops running right. It's a very, very easy fix. So if you have this, I always suggest check the straightness of the push rods. You can just find something flat and hard and roll it and you'll see if it's straight or not. And if you need a new push rod, they're super easy. They're sets all over the Amazon. I will put a link down below to this specific engine's push rod. Uh, but yeah, I highly suggest getting another one. And also I'll put links to the gasket for the head gasket cover. All right. Well, that's it for me. If you want to know anything about Briggs & Stratton Motors, I'm about to drop a ton of videos rebuilding this whole sucker. So stay with me, have fun, and get back to mowing. Talk to y'all later.